is Macros, Mindset, and Muscles. I'm Coach James. And I'm Coach Brittany. We're here to give you the truth about health and fitness. No gimmicks, no bullshit, just just facts. facts. Happy Saturday, Phoenix fam. Happy Saturday. Yay, we're so happy to be here. Yay. James is very enthusiastic about this topic that we're going to do today. She's being sarcastic. Yeah. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. It's not that I don't want to talk about it. It's just that it's something that we talk about so much that sometimes I I look forward to different conversations. But don't we talk about every topic so much? And that's why we do these podcasts, because we're tired of talking about them so much. We've literally already had two arguments. So <laughs> Before we even started recording. Yeah. yeah. You should, you should be on our Facebook, uh, Facebook group because you can see all the ins and outs and the little debates. Yeah, that's fun stuff. So what are we talking about today? We are talking about dun 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 protein. Oh yeah. <laughs> protein. Okay, so protein the reason why we're talking about this is because one it is like the macro that pretty much most like every client that we have initially they struggle to hit their protein. And it's, I mean, it is a big adjustment. You know, the recommended daily amount is like point, what is it? It's like a ridiculously low amount. It's like 0.8 per kilogram of body weight, which is like 0.4 roughly per pound Mm. of body weight. Like roughly don't like, don't ask me to do math on the spot because I can't, I don't math well. Without a calculator or pen and paper. <laughs> we don't math good. So, you know, it's a it's a ridiculously low amount. And the recommended daily allowance or the daily amount, like, is the bare minimum that you should be intaking just to keep your body, like, functioning. Yeah, this, this isn't the, like, amount that you should be eating to be thriving, you know? It's not for optimal health. It's not to support your goals. <clears throat> this is for you just to be laying in a bed. Doing nothing all day long. Breathing. Just to breathe and use the bathroom. So, you know, there's a lot of confusion out there and a lot of misinformation about protein. Um, You know, specifically, like, people worry about protein causing issues to the kidneys and things like that. But if your kidneys are healthy, you know, protein is, is fine. Like, obviously, if you have kidney diseases or issues with kidneys, then you need to consult your doctor about that. But if you are a healthy person... Um, protein isn't something that you need to like worry about. Um, but let's dig into it. So we're going to talk about, first of all, what is the like optimal amount to intake, right? Um, we can break it down into kilograms, but I'm not going to do that because we don't use kilograms. This is America. This is America. So we, uh, we use pounds. And the optimal amount for most people is going to fall in the like 0.8 to 1.2 grams of protein per pound of body weight. So if, you know, let's, I'm going to pull up the calculator to do this because I can't, I can't math. I've already told you this. So if you're a 150 pound person, right, that means on the low end, you should be taking in about 120 grams of protein. And on the high end, you're taking 180, right? So your range of protein should be between 120 and 180. If you are, we'll say if you're a, you know, overweight person at 150 pounds, maybe you're shorter, um, anything like that. Like you want to be on the higher end of protein intake as you're losing body fat. Um, You need more protein when you're losing, when you're trying to lose weight, when you're trying to lose body fat, because it helps preserve your muscle mass. Um, When you are in a calorie deficit, meaning you're burning more calories than you're eating, you, you do lose muscle mass. It doesn't like you will lose muscle mass, even if you're taking in, you know, an appropriate amount of protein. But the goal is to minimize that muscle mass loss. It's very filling, too. It is. So, you know, protein is very satiating. So when you eat protein, you know, it helps you stay full longer because it takes your body longer to break down. It's not as easy for your body to digest. It has to work a little harder, which also means you're burning more calories when you eat protein. Is it a significant amount? 
No, but it all adds up. Yeah, it helps. If you're, you know, if you're eating more protein, you're burning more calories. That means your metabolism, you know, is working harder. So that's a a, po- a plus for why you should be eating enough protein. Um, do you have anything to add to that? Why you should be eating protein? Why? No, like, do I have something to add? Yeah, on that subject. I mean, just depending on whatever your goal is. I mean. If you are trying to put on muscle, I know you refer to like weight loss, but if you're, you know, trying to improve your strength and things like that, your body uses protein to rebuild that muscle and to grow stronger. Because protein is the, it's like it's the, the building blocks. Yeah. It's the building block of every cell in your body. Yeah, so like protein. every cell in your body needs protein. Agree. Agreed. We finally agreed on something. <laughs> Write it down. Awesome. Wow. This is good. Look at us. You know, we're winning. <laughs> Who would have thought? So protein is good for, you know, repair and damage. It's good for recovery. You know, if you're not eating enough protein, you might notice that you're like, you stay sore more, like longer and more often. Um, soreness, you know, it's not a, it's not an indicator of a good workout. So let's go ahead and break that like stigma right there. It's totally not on topic, but I'm going to talk about it because it's relevant. Uh, soreness is not like the tell all like, oh my gosh, I had a good workout. I'm so sore. You know, you really shouldn't be sore after every workout. You should be sore. Maybe the first like, you know, one to three weeks that you start a new workout program. But after that, if you're still sore, then you probably need to analyze like how your recovery is. Like, are you getting enough sleep? Are you taking in enough protein? Are you eating enough? Are you drinking enough? All these things add up. So that's my little tangent. (laughs) <laughs> no, back to the protein <laughs> back to the protein um i don't even know where i was going with that. so we were going into soreness recovery oh we were talking about recovery and having enough and it being the building blocks yeah um i mean that that's it i mean you need protein for it your body needs it for everything yeah so when you take in protein right a lot of people struggle with their protein intake because They limit the amount of meals that they eat a day, or maybe they eliminate certain meals. Like maybe they skip breakfast or they don't eat until lunchtime. Um, You know, you're making it harder to hit your protein goals because now you have to eat more at a meal to hit your protein goal for the day. And like we just talked about, it's more satiating. So um, when you do eat protein, like it, it sticks with you a little bit longer. Now, if you're already behind because you did skip a meal and you're having to eat extra, it's going to make it very, it's going to increase the difficulty of getting that much protein in, in that day. That's why people who do intermittent fasting struggle in hitting their protein goals. Some people do. Some people. Yeah. Some people don't. Anyway, <laughs> I don't know why that just popped in my head. I, I can't think. <laughs> Well, thanks for that. We appreciate that. I'm glad I stopped soon. Yeah, we really appreciate you stopping. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That was the fakest laugh I've ever <laughs> seen you do. <laughs> thanks for making fun of me on a podcast that's on every major platform. That's cool. It's cool. I'm just your husband. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just my husband. <laughs> just, or at least for now. <laughs> You're my special guest today. Yeah, I appreciate my, you. My podcast guest. Thanks, boss. <laughs> well, at least you recognize. <laughs> Nobody likes the boss, by the way. <laughs> See, really. I don't need to be liked by everybody. <laughs> so protein, it's a building block. It helps. Uh, what are some, how do you get protein? So when we get protein, you know, you want to vary your protein sources. There are animal sources, there are plant-based sources, and you want to vary those sources. Um, you know, you don't want to eat all red meat. You don't want to eat all meat. You want to have some veggie sources in there because veggie sources also have fiber and micronutrients that are important for uh, good health. Um, but let's say, let's talk about like some common, like, let's talk about the main meals first because we have like breakfast, lunch, dinner, right? Okay. So let's just start with breakfast. Eggs. Well, can I finish? Oh, I thought it was like a game show. Like I had to like win no. the first one. So breakfast, we're going to talk about some breakfast food sources, right? And just because the name is breakfast, it doesn't mean you have to eat traditional breakfast foods. If you don't like breakfast foods, don't eat them for breakfast. Like if you like chicken and you want to eat chicken for breakfast, I do. You know, eat eat chicken for breakfast. 
Um, but some common breakfast foods, obviously, like Coach James said, eggs. Eggs. You know, one thing you need to understand about eggs, though, is that they have like an equal amount of protein and fat. So if you're counting macros and you have, you know, a fat goal for the day, it could you could be getting a large amount of your daily fats in from just your eggs in the morning or your breakfast because, you know, it's like five point something. It's only, it's more than five, less than six grams of protein per egg, and it has five grams of fat per egg, too. Right. So it's almost one for one uh, protein to fat. So if you're eating five eggs a day, you know, you're getting in 25 grams of fat. If you have 60 grams of fat, I mean, you're left with, I don't know how to do math like that. What is it? So, so <laughs> have, have, a couple, okay, have a couple whole eggs and then have egg whites. Yeah, so you can there mix you them. <laughs> well, you still didn't answer my question. What? <laughs> what, the math question? Yes. Oh, we're going to breeze right past that. That's numbers. Okay. So like I said, if you're, if you're eating 25 grams of fat, you're not left with that much for the whole rest of your day. That's your snacks, your other meals, everything else, right? Um, a lot of people like to add extra fats in, and that's what gets them trouble too, because then, you know, you're adding in extra fats on top of your fattier proteins. Um, some other, like, common breakfast foods, like people love bacon. Sausage. <laughs> But both of those, like they have protein, but they're also high in fat. So if you're having a highly fatty egg breakfast and then highly fatty bacon and sausage or whatever, like, you know, you could very easily go over your fat for the day. Um, We do like to mix whole eggs with egg whites and we'll either, you know, we'll like give a pan a quick spritz of like avocado, like cooking spray. And then we'll just, you know, cook them in a pan Yolky eggs. Sometimes we scramble them. So there's, you know, there's options to like reducing the fat, but still getting that full feeling from eating enough. Um, I like Canadian bacon, aka ham. <laughs> I'll say what, what, what about Canada? No, you know, uh, I like like Jones Farm. It's a type of, it's like, you know, it's pre cut ham. Yeah. And it's, well, it's uncured Canadian bacon, whatever. It's low in fat, but, you know, you get like three slices and it's like 13 grams of protein, one gram of fat. So maybe if you don't want to use egg whites, you know, you use a couple whole eggs and then you add like a lower fat breakfast meat with it. And then, you know, you pair it with some fruits and veggies or just some fruits, like whatever you're going to do to get your micronutrients. Um, yogurt is another one. Which is also going to be applicable elsewhere too, snacks. Yeah, but um, I have my yogurt is my little snacky. Yeah, snack we're gonna day. we're gonna get to that. So common breakfast foods, you know, eggs, egg whites, ham. I, you know, people eat turkey bacon too, but if you look at the nutritional value of it, like you might as well just eat bacon, like regular bacon, unless That's like what I'm doing. you don't eat, you know, unless you're, for like, religious reasons or yeah. whatever. Um. But that is there. Like, that is an option. What else am I missing? Out of breakfast, I mean, that's pretty much it. A protein shakes. I mean, but that's not, see, and that's another thing. It's like a lot of people like to do shakes, but shakes don't replace a meal. Like, no, but if someone is typically doesn't eat breakfast, like that, they can front load their protein. It would be want, better than skipping it altogether. Right. And it makes it easier for someone to hit their protein goal if they did one to 1. 1.5 scoops of their protein powder. And now they're ahead. Now they're at like 40 grams of protein for the day. And, you know. Yeah. Rather than skipping it altogether. Yeah. I mean, and yes, but also like. No, I'm not saying no, that's, a, no, that's yeah. not what I'm saying. I'm You're not saying wrong, but it's we not don't want to get in the habit of replacing meals with a protein shake because a protein shake doesn't replace a meal like it's it's meant to supplement your intake. So it, obviously, like if you're going to skip breakfast, like having a protein shake would be better than like not having anything right. or like having a protein shake and a thing of oatmeal. Yeah. You know, like or like, like a banana, like or even, you know, anything like that. Food. If they're used to having nothing, this is that's the first step I always have with the client is to let's go with a shake. Then once they do a shake, let's add, like you said, banana or a small thing of oatmeal. It's quick, it's easy. Yeah. It's not heavy. And you know, work on it that way. Um, overnight oats are good. 
like breakfast. It's grab and go. It's easy. You prep it, you know, on the weekends for a few days or even the night before you throw in, you know, you can do like you can do a combination of anything. Like you can really get the protein up in there. You add some Greek yogurt with your oats, you know, whatever you like. If you want to add like some chocolate in it for healthy fats or maybe, you know, you want to do a little peanut butter or maybe you're a fruit person, you want fruit in there or some carbs, some additional carbs and micronutrients. You can increase the protein by using a protein shake for the liquid. So like you use Greek yogurt and then you add a liquid too. So you can use a protein shake or even like, you know, if you're a milk drinker doing a milk, um, if you're accounting for that, that fat in there and you don't have issues with it, it's not going to be applicable to everybody. So don't come for us. Because we're not saying like, oh, I don't like drink milk. People are like, I don't like milk. Then don't fucking drink it. <laughs> you know, like I'm just giving ideas here. Yeah. Um, if you're watching your fats, you know, you can do a, a fat free milk. If you want all the fats, then use whole milk. Like there's options for you, but there's ways to increase your protein without like adding protein powder. It's not my favorite thing to add into overnight oats. So I'd rather use like fat free fair life milk and Greek yogurt to increase my protein in it. Okay. Uh, moving on lunch to lunch. Um, I honestly, I love a big ass salad for lunch. And the reason why is because my macros can get pretty low when I'm cutting. Um, I'm a short person. So I just don't need as much like calories as somebody who's taller um, than me. So I love eating a big salad and, you know, you don't have to eat a salad if you don't like it, don't eat it. But if you do like salads and you're like me, you know, I load up my salads with veggies and, you know, I'll put a protein source in there. Usually it's like grilled chicken breast because we meal prep chicken on the weekends so I will cut up however much I need and I will put it over a big salad with like a lower fat dressing. Um, lately, I've been on like California Pizza Kitchen, the Thai dressing. It's so good. It's like this Asian like ginger peanutty thing. Like, I don't know. It's delicious. It's like four grams of fat. She's the experimenter. In case you didn't know, <laughs> like I, I'm, I'm the guy that having pretty much the same thing every day. And yeah. Like I'm not going. I'm not doing the overnight oats. I'm not. I'm not prepping out a salad with whatever kind of peanut sauce you just talked about. It's like, delicious. It's me. It's like but, all right. I'm gonna have some chicken, grilled chicken with some rice and green beans. But you know that's great for you because you get two lunches, right? So I, you do get two lunches. I, no, I eat twice. You get two lunches, and you know when your calories are lower and you don't have as many carbs as you have in a cut. Or maybe you don't have as many fats. Like a salad is a good way to be like satiated, to be full and get a ton of micronutrients also. Oh, yeah. um, I don't typically add cheese to my salads. I know that's like sacrilege for a lot of people. Um, I used to be heavy on the cheese. I will every now and then, but nine times out of ten, I don't put cheese on my salad. And, um, you know, I'll use like some sunflower seeds or even some croutons, but I measure everything out. Because that's where a lot of people get in trouble. So a big salad with protein on it. If you're like James, you know. I love salad, though. I you love really salad. Do. I'm not saying that you don't. God, I feel like I'm under attack. You're so not I'm under attack. Under attack because James is taller and he has requires more <laughs> calories. So like you get so many lunches and you get rice and blah, blah, blah. like I didn't I didn't make myself like this. I kind of did. But whatever. Anyways, you know, protein for lunches. That's what we're on. Yeah. We bulk prep your chicken, bulk prep, bulk, bulk prep, bulk. bulk prep your protein on the weekends. I'm telling you, it's a game changer because even if you have a night where you don't feel like cooking, guess what? You already have protein prepped up. And you know what? If you put like a general season, seasoning on your chicken, some salt, pepper, garlic, salt, pepper, whatever, you can pretty much use it in any recipe that you want. You can put that shit on anything. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know, if you want some buffalo chicken, bam, you can have some buffalo chicken. Barbecue. If you want some barbecue, like put some barbecue sauce on it. If you want to do like a pasta, like 
It's great in pasta. If you want to do uh, like a chicken soft taco, guess what? I got something for that too. Like it's so like the the variety of things that you can make is like infinite. It's just a matter of having like an imagination or just experimenting out a little bit. Um, so chicken, you know, pull, prep. I don't know why uh. those words don't want to work for me this today, but prep your stuff on the weekends. Um, you know, sandwiches. I don't know why people like forget that they can eat sandwiches, but do you remember like when we were growing up, you know, like sandwiches, sandwich, like when you wanted a lunch, like you took a sandwich to work, like you had a little lunch box and you put sandwiches in it. I used to take four sandwiches to school. But like sandwiches are awesome. We and still I eat buy, sandwiches. Yes. Yeah, and I would buy lunch. And you know what? You know what kind of sandwich you could have? What? A chicken sandwich. <laughs> you know, you want to cut up that chicken and make like a chicken salad with it. You can do that. Yeah. Like, I, it's like people just forget that there's like so many options. They overthink it. Oh, yeah. They think that it has to look like this fancy meal prep all the time. Like, it doesn't. You don't have to. Well, if you don't want a meal prep, if you don't want to put your stuff in a meal prep bowl, you don't want to eat like chicken and rice. Like, you don't have to do that. Yeah. You know, a sandwich is great. Like, there's some. I had a sandwich if, today. If you get. So did I. I had a sandwich for breakfast. It was, nice. it was lovely. It was a lovely little sandwich. If you get, like, the lunch meat from, like, the deli counter, those typically have a better, like, protein ratio than the deli meat in, like, the refrigerated section. So you'd have to look at it and see what would work for you. But it is an option. You know, you can have deli meat. You can have lunch meat. If you want to make your own sandwich, like, out of chicken that you make, that's fine too like I'll there's th- nothing I'll, wrong with that i'll throw it into a little burrito wrap thing a little tortilla a little tortilla boom depending on like how many how many carbs i want i mean i can go with a really big tortilla and that one has like 53 carbs in it yeah you know uh some more lunch ideas um you know you can do like a pasta so you know meal prep a pasta if you're a pasta eater throw some protein on it again like it, the protein choices are really up to you, like whatever you like to eat. If you like to eat out, let's talk about that, because that's a, a thing that people do a lot. They eat out because they're working. They're you know, rich. there's sand. <laughs> Must be rich. <laughs> there's sandwich. There's sandwich places everywhere. You know, one of our favorite places to eat is Chipotle. 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 Oh, gosh, I cannot talk today. Chipotle. She hasn't had any caffeine. Anyways, <laughs> you know, go in there and get you a bowl. Um, when I get a bowl, because I am lower, like on macros, I'll do half the serving of brown rice. Like I'll tell them I only want half the serving. I always get double protein. Yeah. It's, this is, it's more expensive, but if you're eating out, you know, you're not necessarily like, oh, I'm, I'm eating on a budget. Like you're just eating out. Yeah, You've already accepted. Like I'm spending up probably close to $20 for my little yeah. lunch. So, you know, get some, get you some double chicken, some double steak. Yeah, the like steak is just actually like, leaner at Chipotle than chicken. Yeah, I mean, and like you're we were talking about the sandwiches. I mean, there's all kind of little deli sandwich places that you know you can look up the macros on, and if you get, I mean, because everything now is like already they've already measured out the servings. Like you're gonna get two slices of this meat with three pieces of that meat on yeah. a six inch, and it's already pre made out. So if you just you know, don't go crazy with the oil and vinegar, then, yeah. you know. Maybe leave off the mayonnaise and just get mustard. Like, you can... By the way, it. mustard is great. <laughs> I love mustard. You don't even have to count that shit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it has, like, it has some calories, but... Not it, enough to neg- worry about. It's negligible. So. Unless you're drinking that that whole container of mustard per meal, like, you're going to be okay. So, furthering on to eating out, right? If eating out is your thing, like, Chick-fil-A, grilled nuggets... I, I think them grilled nuggets get slept on. Hell, that um, that grilled chicken club, club sandwich. sandwich, and it's got like lettuce, tomato, chicken, and it's on like some kind of like I don't know, some kind of brioche bun or whatever. I have no idea what that is. What it's, is a it's, a, it's a different type of. I don't know what kind of bun it is. It might even be like a multi grain or whatever. It's just not a regular bun. I will swap that. That bigger bun for the regular unbuttered bun because I don't want to add extra fat and I actually want to minimize that. Like I prefer to control my fats. Um, I will do the bacon because I'm not going to get a glove sandwich without bacon on it. Mm. 
And then, um, you know, sometimes I use the sauce that it comes with, but sometimes I'll get like the buffalo sauce or mustard and I'll just put that on my sandwich. But that's like a good protein, like eating out meal. It's not crazy in the fats. Yeah. Um, you could also do the cool, the chicken cool wrap in that's there. Good. That's a, that's a good, you know, it has like, I think 38 grams of protein. Don't quote me on that. But it's got a good amount of protein in it. The wrap has a lot of fiber too. So you're getting fiber from that as well. And then plus the veggies. So there's options. Like if you're going to eat out, there are some places and things that you can get and still, you know, get relatively lean protein. Yeah. It's not, it's not the end of the world if you haven't prepped stuff. Yeah. Dinner, moving on to that. Same thing with lunch. It's the same concept, but you know what? Most people eat dinner like at home or with their families. Um, and you know, like that's okay. Uh, what we typically do, like the reason why we keep our fats so much lower, like during the day is because I'd rather have those fats at night. Like when you're counting macros, this is applicable to you. If you're not, then just, you know, Whatever. take it for what it is. Um, I have more wiggle room with fat. So if I want to cook my, my whatever I'm making, like if I'm doing noodles and I want to add some butter to it, like I can, if I'm doing a steak, you know, maybe I want a ribeye instead of a sirloin. So I have options or maybe instead of chicken, I want a sirloin for dinner. You know, sirloin has like nine grams of fat for four ounces. It's saving your fats to the end of the night. Like it helps you stay full longer. So you won't feel hunger again. You know, that way you can go to sleep and, and then you just repeat everything the next day. But if eating something very lean, fast digesting and stuff at dinner sometimes can come back and you're like, oh, now I'm hungry again. Yeah. Hungry. But you've already eaten all the food that you were supposed to eat for the day. So now you're kind of in a tough spot. Yep. So you want enough protein. And like you said, those fats kind of help you at dinner time to stay full through the night. Um, so, you, you know, you're not getting cravings and stuff. If you skip meals earlier in the day, you're actually more likely to binge eat at night. So that's kind of a fun fact. Huh. Crazy, right? Crazy. <laughs> so at dinner, get creative, go out on the grill, throw some food in the smoker, like whatever your whatever your thing is. You know, we love doing like tacos. Um, we'll do like we'll do some shredded meat like in the instant pot. And I'll do like different variations, like I'll do a barbecue pork or I'll do like a green chili pork and we'll do tacos or, you know, we'll use those over some nachos. Like, again, you know, whatever possibilities are in whatever you can think of, like you can make it work. Like if whatever that is, like all you're using is a, a meat source and, you know. Some carbs and whatever, like it's just some math. veggies. It's just some veggies. I like to have steak at night. I like I like having beef at night. I typically don't like to have beef during the day because it's a little has a little bit higher fat content. I stay full a little longer. It makes it difficult for me to uh, get my other meals in. So I like I typically like my middle of the day meals to be you know leaner Later. and lighter. And then at night, like let's throw down. Yeah. So, you know, I think just stop overthinking it so much. I think that's what a lot of people do is they just overthink it. You know, you have your protein, you have your carbs, like a veggie source. You have, you know, some rice, potatoes, noodles, whatever your thing is. Bread. Bread. Yeah. You can use use bread. I mean, there's nights where we'll keep it super simple. Like we have these uh, chicken patties. Remember them? The, oh, yeah. The Don Lee chicken patties. And these are like, these blew my mind. They're 20 grams of protein and it's like one and a half grams of fat. Yeah, they were insane. Like no carbs. And it's kind of like a replacement for a burger. It's not a replacement for a burger. But it, but works. it, it works. works. You know, so like throwing that together and then having that with like a spring mix salad or, you know, some green beans or sweet potatoes, like. It is what it is, you know, just keep it simple. Frozen veggies, like we don't, we rarely buy fresh veggies. Like yeah. every once in a you, while in the summertime. For like certain, certain meals, but like yeah. overall, like I like the frozen green beans. Yeah. Throwing in the air fryer. So easy. 
with, with uh, whatever you sprinkle on it. Yeah. Good stuff. The garlic salt. <laughs> The little, I mean, everything's good with garlic salt on it. Like it's, it doesn't have to be complicated. And I think, it, like you said, keep it simple because these meal preps that you see online on Instagram, let me show you this. And yes, it looks delicious and amazing. And they drizzle some little fancy little sauce on it. Like yeah, it looks like some chef it's shit. Stressful because like you don't have time to sit there and prep that stuff. If you just, if you just prep a little bit, or you know, if you cook on the weekends and you just have all your stuff and you. Do it that way. It's so much easier. I mean, I've, I've cooked di- a little bit extra at dinner time. Like yeah. I do that sometimes too. I, I'm, and like you're saying, cook your proteins on the weekend, and it saves you a headache because I've done the other thing where, like, I cooked in the air fryer my chicken for the next day every single night, and it gets stressful. It sucks because then, I mean, it works. You can do that, but are you going to want to do that every single day? Mm-hmm. It gets old. It, it just does. Something's going to go wrong, and then you're having to run to the store, and on top of everything else you're trying to do, then still cook for the next day's uh, meals, and it just can, it's not setting you up for success. It, things can go wrong really quickly. And, I mean, dinner, like, we have some, I mean, we have some pretty good dinners, and I can get pretty creative. I like the chef. <laughs> this, this. So... But you get a system down, and it just doesn't take you that long to cook dinner. Like, I usually have dinner cooked and served in 45 minutes. Yeah. Like, even if it's something fancier. You know, like, when we do, like, shrimp tacos, that's, like, one of the favorites here lately is some shrimp tacos. You know, you can cook a whole sheet pan of shrimp in 10 minutes. And if you're using cooked shrimp, you don't even have to cook it. Like, you just warm it. But, but we use the raw shrimp, and, you know, I season it up with like some fajita type seasoning and we'll do like a, like a red cabbage slaw. And, you know, we put that in like some high fiber tortillas and that's just like, it's an easy dinner and we're getting fiber. We're getting some nutrients from the cabbage. We're getting our protein from the shrimp. I love that shrimp. That's one of my favorite dinners and it's, it's colorful. I have to say that it's very colorful. I like the cabbage thing. Um, it's delicious. Um, it's, Trin's favorite right now too. Yeah, it's just it's just an easy, not easy. I'm not I'm not the one who cooked it. I'm not gonna say it was easy or not, but it seems like it doesn't take very long for you to prepare. Um, but yeah, I mean, you don't spend all day and all night preparing for dinner. Like you like to use the instant pot, the air fryer, and different things like that to make you know things a little bit easier. Yep, and. Protein is... Oh, yeah. What are we talking about? Protein. Yeah. Yeah. Eat it. Just <laughs> eat, eat it, it bro. <laughs> Don't make it complicated. Eat it. Keep drink it, it. Whatever you got to do. Keep it simple. Um, when you're... Here's the thing. A lot of people will be like, I don't like to eat leftovers or whatever. Like, if you don't want to eat leftovers and you want to prep your food every day, more power to you. You're just making it more difficult for yourself. Yeah. I think we got a podcast on prepping for... Uh, Meal prepping or... For picky eaters. eaters. There you go. Read it. But... It's, we're talking about you. Did we do a podcast on that? Or did we do a podcast? Was that a post? I think I did a live on that. It's in our resource center. It's in the resource center. Yeah. That's what it's I, a live. Yeah. Um, now, as far as snacks go, you know, and this is another, people eat snacky foods and they, then at the end of the day, they're like, oh, like I'm over on my fats and carbs and I don't have like, I can't hear my protein. Yeah, You know, because you're eating snackier foods and that's fine. Like if you have room for them and, you know, if, if your one thing is having a snacky food, then have it. But eating a protein source with your snacks, one, helps you get full and two, it helps you hit your protein goal. Right. Yeah. So some of like my favorite snacky, uh, like some of my favorite snacks is yogurt. You know, they have <clears throat> the Greek yogurts. Um, Oikos came out with one. It's a protein yogurt, and it's got 20 grams of protein per. It's small. It's not very big per individual serving. Like that right there is it's fire. You know that with a little granola and some fruit. Bam! There's your snack. Yeah. You know, um, <clears throat> cottage cheese. Some people don't like cottage cheese. It's uh, a texture thing. Uh, I personally love cottage cheese, and I like putting like taco seasonings on it, and I'll like scoop it up like a dip. So I'll use like baked Tostitos or the pretzel thins. Yeah. I'll use like a serving of those. 
and then I'll like scoop it up and I'll eat the cottage cheese with taco seasonings on it. I mean, it's not everybody's thing. It's my thing. I like it. But if you do like cottage cheese, you should try it. Um, <laughs> then let's see. Some people like cottage cheese with fruit. That's not my thing. If you do like it, then that's fine. That's great. Like cottage cheese is a good source of protein. Uh, tuna. Tuna packs. I think tuna slept on. <laughs> oh yeah, and and relatively cheap too. Like yeah, it's an affor- it's an affordable protein source. Um, and a whole can, like a small can of tuna, has like eighteen grams of protein. My personal favorite way to eat tuna is I'll do like a can of tuna with one tablespoon of like Duke's, not Duke's, uh, Hellman's light mayo. It's like three and a half grams of fat per serving, and then I'll chop up some dill pickles and put it in there. And then I will get like two, uh, two or three lightly salted rice cakes. On those rice cakes, I'll use like uh, I'll use two light laughing cow like cheese wedges. They get a little protein from those too, and I'll spread those over the three, and then I'll put the tuna on top. So it's like a tuna rice cake. It's like a savory rice cake. It's so good. So just to show you the difference between the two of us, like you heard her, <laughs> you heard what she did. I'll open up the tuna. <laughs> and I'll eat it <laughs> with a fork. <laughs> with a fork, and then I'll probably measure out the crackers, and I'll take a bite of tuna and a cracker, <laughs> and a bite of tuna and cracker, and then I'm done. So I love that as a as a snack. You know, deli lunch meat. Again, we were talking about this earlier. I feel like deli lunch meat, like it could work great for a snack. You know, if you like mini sweet peppers, you know, get a couple of the light laughing cow cheese wedges. Cut them up, like spread it in one of those mini sweet peppers, wrap some lunch meat around it. Bam, there's a snack. You got some carbs, some fat, some protein. You make you an adult lunchable with it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, beef jerky. Yes. Beef jerky is a good one. Beef it, jerky is slept on too. I mean, you don't have to worry about it really going bad. You can, I mean. It's, you can get like a bag of beef jerky, like a two ounce bag. And it's like two servings usually. And I mean, you can get like 30 to 40 grams of protein from that bag. And it's not hard to eat the whole bag I don't know. either. Jaw might be sore, but like, <laughs> uh, I love some beef jerky. It's just, there's a lot of things you can do. Yep. Smoothies. You know, if you like smoothies, smoothies would be a good breakfast option too if you have the time to make them. But some smoothies with some fruit and some Greek yogurt. Again, liquid, you know, you could use a protein shake. You could use water. You can use almond milk, like whatever you're. Your thing is like whatever you can use. There's there's an option for you. So we hope that this kind of helps you like see some options for protein. Um, You know, we get more specific and we help our clients like a little bit more individually, like with their likes and dislikes and stuff. This isn't going to be applicable to everyone. Some of you are going to be like, I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like that. So if you don't like it, don't eat it. So we, go, simple. we go much deeper than the stuff that we covered today. More in depth, like in the meal prep guide and stuff. Uh, in the resource like, center. In the resource center, but the meal prep guide that's on the website, too. We don't have it on the website anymore. Oh. Well, for <laughs> our clients and future clients, you know, check out the resource center. Yep, definitely. Uh, don't sleep on that if you're a client. You know, check out the resource center. Check out the recipes. Um the meal prep guide and has the macro cheat sheet at the back. The videos, the ebooks, the there's, worksheets. There's so much else. There's so much. So hopefully this helps. Um, you have specific questions. Don't be afraid to ask and we'll help you. You know, we'll direct you in the right way or whatever. Um, if you're a female, come join the group and you can see more in there. And that's about all that's, I got. That's all I got. All right. Well, we hope you all have a great rest of your day and we're out. We're out. Catch your hands up. Thanks for listening to Macros Mindset and Muscles. Until next time. I'm James. I'm Brittany. We're We're out. out.